Welcome back to Live at Loop. I'm sitting here, it looks like I'm so lonely, but I'm not lonely because we have a whole production team here. And we have you, Jonathan, and you, Nathan. Hello. Let's Thanks, say David. hello. Hello, world. Hello, world. Hello. I know you're all wondering, um, but where's Carl? Carl's the breakout star of Live at Loop and the most charming person in the company. Where is he? He's a fan well, favorite. He's a fan favorite, but here, here he is in his stead. <laughs> <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> This is fine. Carl's home. It's Carl's homesick. Carl is is also you know experiencing audio technical difficulties that were my fault. So uh, you know we're gonna go ahead and give him an update remotely via the live stream. So I hope he's watching, if he's awake. Uh, so cool. So what are we doing here anyway? Uh, we're at live at Loop. So you're at Loop. We uh, our mission is revolution. We care about building new kinds of amazing technology and machines. Uh, really making new things and unlocking new possibilities uh, in all different kinds of industries to help the world help humanity. And we are working in our first season on developing a new kind of packaging machine that is able to handle a lot of, a lot of different types of product input, produce a lot of different case type outputs without any changeovers and hard tooling. So, so far we've been into the pitch, we've been talking about what are we trying to do here, and we've sent these guys off, uh, both Jonathan and Nathan, on a couple of threads on what about the timing studies? Let's go dig up what we had done previously and kind of get our handle on that. What are we going to do about the infeed mechanisms? And so our agenda for today is to hear from these two guys. What have you learned so far? It's only been since last Thursday. So, you know, what have you been able to come up with since then? Where do we take it from here? And uh, once we cover those two things, we'll see if anything else pops out and then uh, we'll wrap up. So hopefully it'll be a very interesting 30 minutes. Thank you for joining us. So do we want to go, f who wants to go first? We didn't discuss this. I'll go first. No, You'll go first. <laughs> okay. I'll go first. Cool. So Welcome. Let me, let me share my screen. Let's see if he can share. Let's see if I can share. So I was tasked with um, investigating infeed systems. And what I came up with was I was trying to eliminate the uncontrolled movement of the can as it enters the shuttle. Um, the previous iteration, there was basically the, the full length of these um, guide rails here. The, um, the, the can was traveling just under gravity without any, any positive uh, support. Can you go in like way closer on that? Yeah. Uh, closer. Enhance. Enhance, enhance. enhance. <laughs> okay, too close, too close. <laughs> That's perfect. Okay. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, originally it was sliding down the uh, length of the guide rails. And I wanted to try to more positively control it. So what I've done is this um, guide, this angled guide here, kind of represents a uh, feed uh, conveyance. And at the end, the intention is that it will be just a, a high friction uh, flat piece of uh, material. And there's a conveyor, a belt conveyor, over the top of it that um, applies pressure uh, against the cans and uh, basically rolls them down the rest of the way. Uh, hey Nathan, can you move your mouse a little less so that it doesn't flutter the? Um... Oh, sorry. No, it, it's cool. It, it looks smooth on my screen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're we're at, we're operating at a lower frame rate. I'm sure our stream viewers are are doing okay, but yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Um. So, uh, what was I saying? I threw so, you so the um the conveyor is this this uh, belt conveyor applies pressure against these cans. Um, against this uh, flat plate here. Mm -hmm. And its purpose is to uh, basically meter them uh, onto the uh, shuttles as the shuttles go by. Now, the way you could meter them, um, if you had some means of detecting the position of those cans, be it optical or ultrasonic or, or some other means, um, if you can detect the position of those on the conveyor, you can then gear the empty shuttles into the position of the cans or the cans. Mm -hmm. So um, the idea being that that the shuttles would would meet the can right as as it's ready to come off the conveyor. Yeah, you've got servo mm -hmm. control on one half, servo control on the other half. You can you can kind of zipper them together, yeah. coordinate, phase them perfectly together, uh, kind of by compensating in either side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Um, one of the concerns uh, that was brought up with this was what happens if a can were to enter the um, this belt uh, tilted 
Would it continue to drive it down uh, in, in one direction? Would it cause it to tilt farther? Uh -huh. um, what I learned is it will tend to straighten itself up because <clears throat> the, um, the belt is uh, fixed parallel to the, um, the opposite surface. It'll cause a can to basically straighten out, and I can, I can demonstrate that if you'd like. Cool. It's like a railroad wheel. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't sound that easy to demonstrate, but well, I'm ready. It's pretty I'm ready to see. Why don't you? Why don't, if? Yeah. Well, I'll let you demonstrate. Go so ahead. I've, I've you want to? Do you want to yeah. get closer to a camera? Because you you could do it here. Okay. Yeah, let's do and that. then. So I've I've got a couple relatively highish friction surfaces here. Okay. Let's see. Are we on? Are we feeling good on this? Yeah, okay. Let me get him out of there. What's this material for our viewers at home? <laughs> this, is just, this is just foam. <laughs> Some foam we had lying around. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, and LaCroix, which we also, of course, had. <laughs> so here's a can. Normally, uh, like, assume this is a fixed uh, part of the conveyor. Uh, and this is the belt part of the conveyor. Normally, it would just, you know, roll like this. If the can is tilted and these stay parallel to each other, as, as it rolls, it tends to... What in the heck? It. Yeah. Okay. So um, there was some concern about it just you know, taking off in some direction and, and not stopping, but it seems to straighten itself right out. Can we, again, just talk about the how nice it is when you make something and it just works <laughs> mechanically? You could talk, we could have argued about that and raised well, eyebrows at it for like We did earlier year. today. Nathan was like, you know what? I'm just going to do this with some foam. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said, I'll, I'll do an experiment. I'll do an experiment. <laughs> could I prove yeah. my point with duct tape? <laughs> yeah. So the scientific method was at play. Yeah, yeah. I also came in this morning and saw all kind of uh, stapled together plywood and, <laughs> and various other contraptions. So I was very proud that uh, that I that there was no fear in terms of yeah. Let's just let's just cardboard and super glue this thing together. So okay, that Is looks there, really cool. I mean, go ahead. Well, I was just say what's what was the methodology between like how did you um, like figure out how long that conveyor needed to be that metering conveyor? Um, I kind of felt like it should cover you know three or two or three cans, and I just pick the length so it does. I um, basically, I, I just kind of threw stuff together mm -hmm. in CAD to, to, to see what, what looked right. Yeah, and what I noticed is we still have this interesting kind of gravity wedge where as the bottle diameter changes, I mean, okay, fair enough, we're, we're taking round objects, mm -hmm. fine. Um, that was, not, you know, that's, that's totally the intention from the beginning that lateral like how far that um that where that belt is lateral to the product can just easily just change with like a little actuator yeah or, or I, I was something. envisioning that mount on, a, on an air cylinder or something um uh -huh. you could do like a little servo actuator with an air cylinder to apply pressure um i was also kind of envisioning the belt itself is made out of some some soft material some, some kind, kind of flexi stuff. yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay yeah cool um and any other yeah any and anything in between that would be it's really interesting um, this is cool. So let me ask you something. In your mind, is this the way forward, or is this a way forward? I would say this is a way forward. There, okay. Okay. <laughs> there's um, basically infinite ways forward, and this is one of them. I, I think this um, more positively controls the the, the product uh, than than the previous iteration. Um, but. You know, the nice thing is we could we could certainly prototype something and, yeah. and and prove that. Yeah, I think that'll be really helpful when we're thinking about things like you know, what are the optimum you know angles that mm -hmm. we can we can play with there? Because you know, at this point, at, at that particular angle, you you really do need a decent amount of real estate in order to get that you know to for it to marry right there and and for the the shuttle to clear it. Right. Yeah. So <clears throat> so this angle is kind of chosen uh, just so the the empty shuttles can clear it, uh, so they can go underneath the conveyor. Um, mm -hmm. I was also trying to minimize the angle relative to the um, to the shuttles, so the product isn't really changing direction that much. Yeah, you know what the angle of the the slope angle on the fixtures it's slack so that it's not that aggressive when it's going down the slide. Mm -hmm. There's no more going down the slide in this concept. Which to me, and it, it, it helps if it's steeper. Mm -hmm. If it's not dropping, it helps if it's steeper because right. then you can really get, you don't have to worry as much about it like flying off the ramp. Mm -hmm. So you do have a thing of where you need to make sure it's going to keep 
going downhill like on mm-hmm. the on the incoming feed but that that could allow us to have it be tilted we could get better dynamics out of the process from just that and then there's less tilt and less other stuff to deal with although i guess now to think about it there is some pretty pretty significant deceleration where like you do want it to be kind of laid down because if it's too steep then it'll just when it comes to a stop at the pick point it's just going to keep flying yes yeah in in that context Mm. yes there's also as you increase the angle of the conveyor relative to the shuttles Mm -hmm. there's a higher impact force uh, from the product to the shuttle yeah um, mm-hmm. So right. that needs to be considered. There, there are ways of, you know, one way I thought about, you know, mitigating that would be to put a UHMW shoe like right behind the shuttle where where the impact happens to make sure the shuttle you know stays on the track. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. But, just um, a little bit of a guide rail, just because mm-hmm. it's not right. Or that would be mm-hmm. that would be that would be super interesting. Or another track section with some um, pushback on the magnets. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I was thinking just like a, uh, at first just a set of guide rails. Yeah. Um, opposite, but I don't Either. think it needs to be that that uh, expensive. No, right, right. Uh, well, yeah, I was just saying something ridiculous. Um, cool. Um, yeah, I, I, or it could be up where the up right near where the rails are. If the rails flex, then it just kind of hits hits against that or something. something. Any any kind of backstop mechanism mm-hmm. so that it doesn't like so that it's not just the magnets that are holding that whole right that whole force that's really cool uh is there any more do we want to come up with an do we have a name for this as an in feed type do we, uh, so do we want to do we want to come up with a shorthand do we want to do a little naming session like because <laughs> yeah. it would be good to, n- to have like a single word to refer to this um what do we want to call this pinch belt i don't know I guess that'd be the name of this thing. Um, hmm. Um, integrated machine infeed. <laughs> integrated machine infeed solution. I, I miss. <laughs> <laughs> no. I could pause infeed. Uh, okay, we'll call this one. Uh, this kind of like it's. Did you call pinch roller? Uh, pinch belt. That's what I said. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's call it pinch pinch belt. Yeah, pinch belt. That's what you said. Pinch belt. Um, cool. So we have pinch belt. Is there any more development on pinch belt before we would say, well, let's just let's just make some cardboard and plywood pinch belt um, scenario? Or I, th- I you... think we could certainly build a uh, cardboard and plywood um, thing from this. Uh, it's certainly uh, just a cartoon at this point. There's you know, no no engineering done other than just kind of putting shapes on the screen so you can vi- visualize what's happening. Yeah, I think yeah the and I, I think after we were talking on Thursday too the there I don't know if it's because it was my idea I'm I'm aware I'm aware that it was my idea of doing a lateral move mm-hmm. um, if we want to put a little more thought into it because it's it was still a cartoon and there was that intermediate V belt thing that we had discussed do do we want to yeah we can we can uh, look at that I develop the right. those two candidates and kind of like have those as be our options mm-hmm. I thought of ways to actually implement um, like a V block type conveyor okay I couldn't find anything that was pre made that had V blocks in it um, if you know of a vendor that does sell something like that um, or maybe the audience knows of a vendor that has it yeah <laughs> well uh, the the V block was going to be a fixed pitch I almost felt like like uh, just a normal chain that mm-hmm. had like on wherever the chain link is, you know, you have yeah, the mount point for like whatever that. That's exactly kind of what I was thinking is, is attached to the chain, and then yeah. the 3D print or machine out of wood some some V blocks. Uh, yeah. Bolt to the chain. Yeah. Why don't it would be awesome to have a li- like, or the other the other the third option would be we don't need an intermediate V block. We just want to detail more on like let's do corrugation and let's let's mm-hmm. show in more detail just the pure like just one shot slide method Mm -hmm. those are the those are the three candidates to me that seem the most promising like i think one of them will work Mm -hmm. um so what would you say to working on those other detailing more on those other two kind of to this level like this is really really cool looking yeah um it's simple but it like i immediately get it after hearing verbal descriptions i was like i i couldn't understand so maybe let's do those three and We'll see where they go, and that might be enough of infeed, and then we go on to some other topic. But do you want to try either for Thursday or for following, you know, over the next week or so, whenever you have time, 
let's do those other two. Mm -hmm. And then we can kind of collect them and make a decision about maybe we prototype or we, we come up with some prototype setup where we could do a few, maybe all of them and see which one is the winner, do like a runoff. Sure. I don't think the physical prototyping would be part of the NMC yet. Like, I think that might be like, that's ready for a prototype ship in six or some prototype development mm -hmm. that we would do maybe for season two, tune in for season two. Um, but I feel like if we got it to that degree, we could then say, okay, hand it off to the prototype team, which also might be us, but <laughs> you know, hand it to the prototype team and uh, let's go do a, let's do a few weeks of just physical testing and prototyping. Sure. So cool. You got any other thoughts on this you want to share? Hmm. No, I don't think so. Okay. That was good. It looks cool. Yeah. Do we have any other interactions or feedback so far? Carl is blowing up the chat wondering where the donuts are. Carl's wondering where the donuts are. There were bagels this morning. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We don't actually have a lot of food when Carl's not here. <laughs> <laughs> it just happens that way. <laughs> Nathan, you kind of jumped in uh, talking about how this changes the force. Uh, we're trying to create a guardrail to keep the shutter on. Could you maybe explain how that, how the shape of this thing would affect the shuttle's ability to stay on? Yeah, so <laughs> you, you can kind of see... Go ahead and explain, Nathan. This isn't distracting at all, I'm sure. <laughs> you, you, you can kind of see um, how... I'm not sure, can the camera see the TV? You want to, Micah, uh, you, you want kind to of see how the, the direction changes here as it goes from the command section to the uh, shuttles. The more change of direction, uh, the more impact force against the uh, shuttles as the uh, product transitions from the conveyor to the shuttle. So um, one thing I was talking about was putting a um, putting a UHMW like plastic uh, guide right behind the shuttle to make sure that it can't come off the track. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking about like kind of like the software aspect of it. I'm just Im imagining like what is it? This the handoff is going to be happening really quickly. Yeah, you you, you and that has to be the slow part of that process. That has to be the slow part of the cam, right? Because otherwise, you got to ramp up and bring in the next the next one. I mean, you got to co cover a fair amount of real estate. Um, you know what I mean? it, it depends on the, the loading. I mean, the way I showed this, I didn't show a lot of empties here, but I would expect the empties would be stacked back, oh. um, you know, quite a ways, you know, three or four empties, uh, kind of in a queue. And those would be geared into the uh, actual location of the of the product on this conveyor. Yeah, that's true. You would, you would have a little bit more, uh, you know, if you're, if, if say, this, this can was was looking at a shuttle here, yeah, you would have you would have more time for that shuttle to come through. I mean you'd still have to haul, I think. Mm -hmm. I bet that I bet that conveyor could haul. Yeah. yeah um, I mean in the numbers we were talking about, I think it was on the order of five a second though. Mm -hmm. That's really fast. Um, I mean it's not You're talking about five a second like at that point. At this point? Yep. And that's gonna again, that's gonna be the slow part, right? It would be consistently five per second because it would be a even. It would mostly be an even stream coming in, but that's that's only two hundred milliseconds per. It's not. That's not a lot of seconds. No. Um, and I think that was going back to the thinking about it. That was also the motivation for um, having a lateral move. Was the that shift could happen over like a, over six feet. Mm -hmm. And it could take like a full second to get down there, and they could, you know, many of them could be transitioning at the same time. Right. It kind of like stretches out that transition process. Um, and you know, if that thing is, th there shouldn't be like a lot of relative speed, right? It should just be, you know, any adjustment should be really fine. Like once, especially once it gets pitched properly, you know, you're only gonna have, they're gonna be synced, like. Yeah, come you know way in advance of that of that interface happening. It's not mm -hmm. going to be making like multi-inch shifts, mm -hmm. um, and it probably could ramp up and ramp down. I don't know. So I, it, yeah, you're I, right. it'd be better if it didn't though. Yeah, 
<laughs> it would be better if it didn't. We're just kind of smooth it, you know. But yeah, sending it down a slide, you don't control it, but you know, you can you can wave at it for a second. <laughs> Have a nice trip down the slide. I think as far as like moving down the slide, um, you know, if you uh, were to vibrate the shuttles as as they're making their their transition from the uh, you know transition down that slide, you know, it might decrease the friction and allow that to fall a little bit faster. Yeah, I heard a lot of worries about friction, and I it, it makes me want to prototype more mm -hmm. because yeah, anyway that. You're clear on our other candidates and de detailing that some more, and like we'll come back and like let's do a summary of that, mm -hmm. and next you know sometime next week or the week after, um, come back and we'll revisit this. We're already 20 minutes in, okay. um, so maybe we'll shift over to yep. you. You can talk about what you found in the time studies, sure. and we'll see what happens next. And I was showing these Spielman bagels in the meantime. They didn't know they were going to be on the show, but they're uh, very delicious. They open at 6 a.m. So go check those. Go check them out. Yeah, there was one I had, on, had this morning with sea salt on it. It was delicious. Oh yeah, vegan too, except for the cheddar ones. All right, let's see if this full screen situation works. How are we doing? Does that look good? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Let me see if I can. Ooh. Oh, it pauses it. Oh. <laughs> or your computer just froze. <laughs> All right, well, I'll have to. If I was more adept at this, I could probably figure out how to. Do it. All right, so anyway, this is. Um, what are we looking at? Yeah. Yeah, this, so this is taken from, um, from the simulation that uh, we took the videos from in the official slide deck. Um, so. This is um, considering, um, I guess you would call this either, I guess you would call this two up, but you would have a tool where it's um, four sets of two, moves up another set of two, and then uh, so four, four cases. Four four of, packs. Yep, four yep. four packs, mm -hmm. um, and then you're out the out feed. Um, so yeah, this was really interesting. Um, I found out that... Uh, if you if you keep the infeed rate constant here, and there's any variation on like how long it takes the robot to place, or um, or how long it takes it to pick, it can have some uh, some pretty drastic results um, if you uh, if you do it wrong. So in this case, you'll see um, from this point on. It just makes a velocity move around here constant to um, to a position. So if you change, let me see if I can. I will add while he clicks around that scene viewer is the BNR tool for yes. visualizing real-time code that's running exactly the code that would run in the control system, exactly the code that would run in the track system is what we're looking at in these yes. simulators. And that's um, really helpful for dev. Yeah. And it's, yep, so this is running on an actual simulated PLC on my on my laptop here. Okay, so you can see, okay, here's some Automation Studio code. So I'm going to see if I can maybe move a little window here and you can kind of see what happens, for example... So what you're looking at is the live view of the user data types, the data structures that set up the product. So uh, this is the real control code that would run. We can change the where the pick plate, where the positions are, what case size we're running, basically the recipe. We, it's all running in real time. Okay. So for example, um, I've got a couple of simulated values down here uh, for what the robot's doing. Mm -hmm. um, so we have um, a half a second dedicated to that first pick. Uh, which is when it grabs and moves up, and then half a second for the second pick where it's waiting for the shuttle to get into place, um, and then a second and a half for the time it takes to grab um, both rows of four, put them in the case, and mm -hmm. then be back into position for, this, for the first pick again. So if I go in here and I change, let's say, all right, instead of a second and a half, um, 
going to say, all right, well, this process is, is slower for some reason. Um, I'm going to say, all right, maybe it's going to start taking two and a half seconds to pick. So you'll notice that we're going to start queuing up a whole lot more over here. And then what actually happened there was the empties had to make up so much ground that they ended up um, going so fast that they ended up uh, uncontrollably like colliding into each other. So it stops the simulation. It starved, it starved the infeed? Or it, yeah, it, well, it doesn't even make it. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, it starved the infeed. Um, so you know, it was basically an empty would have to eventually come all the way around over here in order to uh, try to make up for the constant um, constant loading here, and um, can't do it. And so, if 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 you're keeping to how we're you know how we're doing it, where we have a constant empty here, um, you could probably you know slow the whole system down and. Maybe have, slow have we down played, upstream. Yeah. Have we played with how many shuttles to put on there to change? Would that would that have? Yeah. I, uh, this is one of these tricky balance things. Yeah. In this so, case, yeah. you yeah you would want to you could add more shuttles mm -hmm. in this case. Um, but I think what I'm more interested in doing, and I haven't explored this quite yet, I, I'd be more interested in maybe taking out these two straight segments and just making it shorter altogether. Yeah. 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 Um, I didn't get a chance to do that, um, but that's going to be something I do really really soon. Um, the main thing, though, that I've noticed, so if I go back, I can still keep this at, you know, two and a half seconds. If, if that's what my robot does, that's that's what it does. Um, but if I change this value here, which is the in-feed rate, if I change that down to, say, 50, right, and I run it again, yeah, it's way slower. Um and it's 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 more balanced. Um, so there's this sensitivity to right. process times, number of shuttles, right. in feed speeds. There's right. some kind of envelope that you got to stay within, exactly. otherwise you get in trouble. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's 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 a completely different way of thinking than, you know, how we're. It's it's not linear quite. Like mm -hmm. you know, once you put something on a conveyor and it's gone, you don't care about it anymore. It's, yeah. You yeah. have to worry about the return. You have to worry about what happens. Um, once the process happens, you know you still have a finite number of, uh, you know, finite number of shuttles. Um, yeah. So this, so this would work fine. So you could potentially slow, slow down your in feed. Um, you could add more shuttles. Um, you're not hitting as many cases per minute. You're not hitting but... as many cases per minute, but you're not hitting that, that rate anyway. If your robot's taking much longer to do its. Place. Yeah, because you, all the flow, the flow at each point has got to be equalized. Otherwise, you're going to have buildup or starvation of like whatever pinch points. Because right. however many cases times however many cases per minute times however many bottles cases per minute has got to equal what is going into the machine, right? Otherwise, it doesn't balance. So I wonder if that's something to look at too, some kind of equality on that. Like 75 cases right. of eight bottles each is this many? If that many per minute, like that, there's some kind of I don't know if there's some way to figure it out, even just from a that's got to equal that, like that equality. I don't know, or we just yep. sort of play with it and fiddle with it just to get a, a feel for it intuitively. So yeah, I'd like yeah, I'd like to some somehow figure it out mathematically to where it's you have. I mean, you really we really should be able to. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that'd be really really good to uh, <clears throat> to do that. And like I said, I really want to be able to play around with um, shortening the track, play around with number of shuttles. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you feel like you have enough clarity to play around and, and keep exploring, or do you want to make any, set out anything spe specific that you want to come back with? Or I mean, we don't need to answer that right now if you're still just, just <coughs> yeah, uh, working, yeah, I, working through. Yeah, like I said, I really didn't get as much time dedicated to this as I wanted to uh, the okay. past few days. So it would be good for me to probably just to dig in a little bit more and... Um, yeah, we'll come back next. What I can, yeah, I come can back next time out. and just tell us what you learned. I mean, it doesn't have to be much. Like I said, Thursday was only a few days ago, so exactly. Yeah. Um, as long as we're this is this is awesome to see even and, and kind of get it re refreshed. Let's see what happens if I do this. Three up. There's some very knowledgeable viewers asking our question that I'll try to communicate. Uh, oh is that a 50 meter per second acceleration decel rate? Shuttle can do it. Will, will product stay on there? Yeah, that's that's a good question, and then and, and a good eye. Um, I'm not totally sure. I'd have to I'd have to run this probably through a spreadsheet. I don't know if we've done that yet. Have we done it to where we've done a taking the CG into account and you can see in the config. Um, 
the, oh, yeah, sorry, there are yeah, different sorry, Excel here. values for whether, yeah, let, yep. I'll, I'll explain. So there's different shuttle values you can see in the, in our parameterization. Oh, when we built this control, we were thinking about that. It it helps a lot. Well, you don't you get a lot more mass if there's a product in there. Right. So you don't want to accelerate it as much. Uh, but if you, and you also have an issue of sort of the centrifugal force and it wanting to tip out, it wanting to fly off the outside of the corner like it's on a NASCAR track or something. So we have separate configurations for whether there's product on there or not. When it's empty, it runs at 50. And, right. you know, it's, it's within the ballpark of what's possible. When it's, when it is loaded, it's running at 20, which I'm pretty sure is meters per second squared. So it's about mm -hmm. 2G, um, which according to our triangles and our slope angles and stuff, we felt like, yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Like it should, it should never go weightless and fly off in either the outside direction or any of the stopping directions. So, um, you know, again, it would be wonderful to see that in a physical prototype so that everyone can be reassured instead of uh, being, being nervous. What I noticed yeah. so far, that's the third time w w that we would be reassured by seeing it happen physically. So um, that's going to be awesome. Any, any other questions coming? Okay. Um, and these are 50 millimeter shuttles. I don't know if we had said that at any point. Yeah, 50. Okay. Yeah, cool. All right. Um, so you know what you need to do. You know what you need to do. Uh, today is Tuesday. We're going to come back Thursday. There's not a lot of time, but uh, maybe in, that, in, the, in, the, in between now and then we can uh, get a little more detail on the other shuttle designs, or we'll just see what we have at that time. It could be a short conversation. I think hitting the throughput study and kind of is going to help us answer questions like, do we need to divert? Do we need to build other stuff in that's going to be able to account? Right. You know, like let's start with how do we just what are the boundaries of the process as it is now? Like you keep working on that, you keep working on in feed, and uh, yeah, we'll have more to share after we we learn about it. This looks really cool. I'm really happy to see this. You guys have anything else to add or any other topics? Well, I think um, this is going to be kind of a trusting collaboration thing because one thing I noticed in watching this is the infeed system and the timing studies interact with each other. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, the, uh, depending on what infeed system gets chosen, it'll affect how the timing needs to get tuned and vice versa. Yeah. So. And the other thing that was interesting, and I'll just I'll just give you this like way of thinking about it that we came up with when we were looking at these timing studies is that all of the shuttles, if you imagine where they are in time and then you, you sweep that, what, what happens is they get closer together and then they get further apart and there's places where they stop. Like, it's a bunch of uh, like lines that don't overlap each other, but they get mm -hmm. wider and they come closer together. And there's like different segments. How long is that segment? In t like you can look at all the shuttles over the entire time mm -hmm. in certain kinds of charts and then you see like, oh, there's my slope for unloaded. There's my slope for loaded. Ah. And that's a, a good way to help mm -hmm. see the complete cycle because this is really hard Yep. to keep the, all the timing in your head. So I might be able to dig up some of those old charts or you know, you might just think about getting the sh position of each shuttle over time and kind of like playing yeah. around with views of that. That's and, a good idea. And looking at the different um, areas of the process and where, where all the time goes. Um, okay. Uh, cool. I think that's it. I think we better wrap up. So let me see if I can summarize. We're working on an awesome new packaging machine that requires no fixed changeovers in tooling if our infeed mechanisms and all of our physics are correct once we actually show it for real. But we're building the simulators, we're building in CAD, we're working on the concept because if we can pull this off, it'd be an amazing accomplishment. That would be a really cool machine. A lot of people would want to have that machine in their facility. So let's try to figure out if we can make it real. If you have any other input or criticism or questions or, you know, please, please share with us. Designs, cartoons. Please help us make it better. <laughs> uh, please poke holes in our theories. Mm -hmm. um, please build physical prototypes that demonstrate that we were right the whole time. Yeah, and uh, send them to us. <laughs> send them to us. <laughs> send us your pictures of your cardboard prototypes. <laughs> uh, we want all that stuff. So um, let's see. I think we're almost ready to wrap. Let me just look over to the production team. Is there anything you want? They did great. They did great. Oh, thank you for the praise, Jeff. I appreciate that. <laughs> all right. I'll catch you all later. Thanks for joining us. Bye.